my own connection to the civil rights movement is that I was, I entered the University of Georgia in January of 1961 under court order after two and a half years of administ exhausting administrative remedies. And during that period, the civil rights movement was born. It started in 1960 in Nashville uh, with four students who sat in at a lunch counter. While the civil rights movement was, was beginning to take its baby steps, uh, through sit-ins and, and uh, student activities, uh, my case uh, and that of Hamilton Holmes at the University of Georgia was one, and we entered in January 1961. What was significant about that is that it actually was the first successful uh, desegregation of higher education in Georgia, to be sure, and I think even in the Deep South. There were a lot of journalists covering me and so I think one of the things that helped me get through that very otherwise difficult period was that I was watching the journalists watch me and watching how they performed. And one of my favorites, in fact, who became a real role model for me and a mentor and a good friend was Calvin Trillin, who went on to distinguish himself as a writer for The New Yorker just a few months before I got uh, to The New Yorker. I think that throughout my journalistic career from there to The New York Times to PBS to NPR and CNN, I, I guess I've worked in every journalistic medium, but my consciousness was formed in those early days of commitment to human rights, civil rights, equality, and justice. Now, I've never been a journalist who like the term objective. In fact, I re reject it because all of us are creatures of our own experiences. I prefer to use the terms fairness and balance because I think that the sensitivity that I developed as the subject of news and as a person who was deeply involved with people who believed in equality and justice and freedom and human rights I couldn't go to South Africa, for example, in 1985 when the black community there, a black majority, were being oppressed by a white minority and violently at that, and not have some feeling about that. But the fairness part of it was that I also talked to the Afrikaners to get their views about why they felt black people there were inferior. And I think that that attitude, which has re been reinforced every place I've worked, uh, particularly the news hour where Jim Lehrer used to talk about producing news that can be used, which means that you have respect for the judgment and the intelligence of your audience. So I'm not there to show off myself. I'm there to be the conduit to the public with information I think will help them be better citizens, better informed, and give them news that they can use.